this time what I've done is I've soaked up um, some old egg trays um, in boiling water. Mm. So I've literally poured it on. We basically just soaks with the cardboard mm. and then we can use that for growing mushrooms on yeah, as well. Good. That one, that's quite cold now, so we can start adding the spawn to that one okay. now if you like. Oh, yeah, there's a little bit of water in the bottom. There we go. What we'll do now is we will uh, actually inoculate the cardboard that I prepared uh, yesterday um, with mushroom spawn. Um, and it's very simple to do. Basically what we have here is a number of um, egg boxes. Now ideally you want to try and be as clean as possible. We're going to use oyster mushrooms which are far from fussy but if, you, if you've got access to it, some sort of hand sanitizer is quite a good idea and just basically get any um, spores that might be on your, your hands off before you start. If you haven't got that, just wash your hands immediately before doing it is, is also adequate. Um, so what I'm really going to do is just literally sprinkle a few, um, few grains of spawn into each layer. So I've stacked these cardboard um, formers together. Um, so with a packet of uh, spawn, sometimes you'll find, um, particularly with the blue grey oyster, it's such a fast growing mushroom um, that this is kind of all knitted together into a lump. If that's the case, just give it a little bit of a, a prod before you open the packet just to break up the individual um, um, uh, grains from it. And then literally all I would do is sprinkle a few of those into that layer, a few into the next layer, and so on. Um, and this really isn't that critical. So you're using about a whole packet of all, nearly a whole packet of those? I probably only packet. used half a packet yeah. on that. Um, the, the amount you use isn't critical, um, but what you'll find is that the, the more you use, the faster it will grow, and the more you use, the less likely it is to, to have contamination. It will colonize faster. Um, the blue-gray is the best one of all because it is so quick to colonize. Um, that's basically it. So uh, what we'll do now is cover it over, keep it moist. Um, and the most important thing, when we cover it over, uh, because it's um, uh, respiring, it produces carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide will increase in concentration and that stimulates the mushroom to grow through the material. That's quite important. And then what we will do in um, about four weeks time, four to five weeks time, it's not critical, could leave it six weeks or eight weeks, um, we'll open it back up, the carbon dioxide level will drop very suddenly and that stimulates the mushroom to start producing mushrooms rather than to carry on growing through the material. Um, With some mushrooms that trigger mechanism is extremely strong, so what will happen is if you leave it covered up it will not produce mushrooms, when you uncover it it will. With other mushrooms like the oyster mushroom it's not that critical, it will, it will start producing mushrooms even if you leave it covered up. Um, what you will find though is they grow very spindly, uh, they don't produce very good mushrooms covered up so it is important to uncover it when you're finished. So there we go, that's one for under your bed. Okay. Um, anywhere anywhere with sort of room temperatures uh, is adequate. So um, I could leave that anywhere between 12 degrees and 25 degrees. Um, ideally, when we open it up to produce the mushrooms, um, we like to lower the temperature by a few degrees. But again, the blue-gray, particularly the cultivated blue-gray oyster, is so tolerant of different conditions. It really isn't that critical. So we just leave that now. Don't have to lay anything with it. Nothing water. whatsoever. You need to spray it with water and no. keep it moist. Keep no. It covered with plastic. Just, just leave, leave it, it as it is. We just yeah. need to put a reminder on our phone or something or in our diary yeah. to come back in six weeks. Absolutely. Up, yeah. And then we yeah, spend that with yeah. That's that's exactly it. Yeah. So we just leave it as it is. Um, and then this one here is one that I set up um, uh, literally about um, four or five weeks ago. This is perhaps this has been rushed a little bit. Um, if you if you look at the uh, um, the egg boxes, you, um, you can see where the mycelium has started to colonise it. It's very heavily colonised here, but it hasn't um, colonised it so well on the outside. This could really have done with an extra few weeks before I, I opened it up. Um, if you see that it isn't fully colonised, you can still see the material in amongst the, uh, um, the mycelium, then it could probably do with a few more weeks before you, uh, you open it to raise the mushrooms. Yeah, and will the spores that you put in, in all the different layers, will some of them come out the side or will they all be coming up 
the the, well, yeah. what tends to happen is the mushroom sense the uh, the mushroom mycelium senses where the uh, um, where the oxygen is highest. So that's where the mushrooms are produced. So um, generally speaking, it won't tend to grow from the bottom of the uh, um, from from the block that we've colonised. However, if we were to put a hole in the bag, they will tend to grow through that hole and. That's exactly what we will do with this one here. Um, we'll actually put holes here and there specifically to encourage the mushrooms to grow out through those holes. Mm. What you'll find with something like this is you'll usually get some around the edges as well as from the top. Um, my personal experience is oyster mushrooms tend to like coming out through the side of something mm. more than through the top of something. When they come out, so after six weeks we're taking the, we're opening it up. At that point, are we needing to do anything? Are we needing to spray it with water or anything? Yes, absolutely. What we want to try and do is maintain a humid environment around the mushrooms themselves. Yeah. Um, so mushrooms don't like to dry out particularly. Some mushrooms are quite tolerant, like the shiitake mushrooms. They seem to grow quite happily in a dry environment. Um, but of course, what happens is the mushrooms, generally they have thin membranes. They tend to like to be um, very moist. I think a mushroom is 70-80% moisture. Um, so what it's doing is drawing the moisture out of the actual substrate and putting it into the mushroom. And of course, the drier the environment, the more moisture that's pulling out. And it, there comes a point where there isn't enough moisture there. Also, at the stage when the, the mushrooms start to pin, when the little baby mushrooms start to appear, they need very high moisture. So um, if you um, stop spraying when that's happening, you tend to find they abort. They will just dry up and, and die, basically. Um, so, yes, it's quite very important. The way we do it is um, rather than spraying the mushrooms themselves, which for some mushrooms they don't tend to like that, what we literally do is just spray um, the walls of the, the, the polythene bag that they're in. And what we're trying to do is create a humid environment. As that moisture evaporates, the air inside here um, has a much higher humidity than out in the room, and so it keeps the mushrooms happy. Generally speaking, we do it twice a day, if you're in a very dry environment, you might do it three times a day, um, but twice a day is normally good enough for most um, indoor household growing sessions. If you're growing it outdoors, um, you probably get away with once a day because it's generally, certainly at night, a lot, uh, a lot more humid.